Hi guys, I'm Dees and you're watching the SUV Battle channel. This is the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser 300. And in this video, we will take it off-road as part of the test drive arranged by the Toyota in Kazakhstan. And to understand how better or worse the all-new Land Cruiser has become, we will compare it to the previous one, the TLC 200. By the way, this Toyota Land Cruiser 200 participated in the Clash of the Titans in a company with Mercedes-AMG G63, the Lexus LX570, Range Rover, and others. The link to this video is in the description or right now in the upper right corner. I also recommend to subscribe to my channel because in the next video, there will be an epic battle. We will compare the performance of the four-wheel drive of the latest Toyota Land Cruiser 300 with a huge number of different SUVs on an obstacle that is already familiar to you. The footage has already been shot and will be uploaded on the channel in the nearest future. So please don't miss it. Now, let's get back to the topic of today's video. We will start our test drive with the Land Cruiser 200. This is a standard 2019 car with moderately off-road capable tires. It has a 4.6-liter V8 gasoline engine and an automatic transmission. As soon as we switched to the low range, the surround view system was activated. Check out the screen resolution because on the Land Cruiser 300, it will be absolutely different. We easily overcome bumps and rocks underwater having such big wheels. But if it has some crossover, which normally has less ground clearance and suspension travel, we would have counted all the big rocks under the car. The Land Cruiser handles this obstacle with ease. For such a car, we need more difficult tests. We drove through a small pond and were climbing a hill with lots of grass. But grippy tires and a huge suspension travel allow us to easily cope this obstacle. Now we shift to a high range of the transfer case to understand the acceleration. The car slowly picks up speed, demonstrating good bump damping abilities of the suspension. But to be honest, I was more worried about the low hanging front bumper lip to avoid damaging it while swinging. The next obstacle is an ascent with a slope of 42 degrees. So we need to switch to the low range again. We've also activated the crawl control system. The driver can choose from five driving intensity levels. I have chosen the maximal one and the car drives forward confidently. And now we have to drive downhill. The slope is so steep that you can't see where to go. The front view camera is exactly what you need in such situations to see what is ahead. We make a stop and look at what descent angle the car is standing now and to check how fast the crawl control works, I'll put it in reverse and see what happens. As soon as I let go of the brake pedal, the car slid down a little and only then began to climb uphill. And now I want you to pay attention to specific sounds of the brake system when descending in the crawl control mode. Effective, but very loud. I wonder if something has changed in this respect in the Land Cruiser 300. Dynamic acceleration again. A large SUV pleasantly rushes on a dirt road. There is not even a hint that the suspension can be hit to the bump stops. Now we will do all the same, but on the Toyota Land Cruiser 300. It has a 3.5 twin turbo engine, a 10 speed gearbox, and most likely a new traction control system, plus a limited slip differential on the rear axle. So this car should definitely drive differently. And there are also more off-road capable non-stock tires. Seems like a little cheating from the Toyota. When put in drive, surround view cameras work up to 20 kilometers an hour. The picture is better and the wider screen allows you to see more details. An important innovation of the TLC 300 is that the multi-terrain select system works not only in the low range, but also in the high four mode of the gearbox. A user can select auto, dirt, sand, mud, or deep snow modes. There is also a rock mode, but it will only become active when the transfer case is in low range. 
Now we will drive in auto mode and the car itself will adapt to the driving conditions. Previously, the transparent hood function had to be launched with a separate button, but now the system is activated automatically when the off-road mode is on. Here, we will make a short stop to check how the traction control system works when slipping. But the grippy tires firmly hold on to the ground and the car easily continues driving. By the way, besides the usual eco, comfort, normal, sports, sports plus modes, there is a custom mode available in the new Land Cruiser. Using it can fine tune the driving hints of the car for yourself. We reached the next obstacle and here we just turned off the multi-terrain select with no need for additional activation of the low range as it was in the previous Land Cruiser and we selected the mud mode. Plus for more serious tests, the Land Cruiser has the central locking differential. Its work was demonstrated to us at the very beginning of the test drive. But for our test, there is no need in locking the central diff. There was minor slippage of the front left wheel at the exit but I think it is because of the different driveline than the Land Cruiser 200. In any case, the traction control system interfered as quickly as possible and the car kept its speed without getting stuck on this diagonal suspension. Now we activate the Sport Plus mode and press the pedal to the metal. Let me remind you that the Land Cruiser 200 was accelerating quite slowly. So let's see how the Land Cruiser 300 will perform. Good pickup after 4,000 RPM. You can feel the difference with the Land Cruiser 200 without any measuring equipment. The new steering has gotten better as now it is a hybrid. It combines hydro and electric power steering. The LC300 definitely handles better both on and off-road. In the meantime, we reach the hill and it's time to switch to neutral. Activate the low range, put the gearbox back in drive and activate the crawl control. We choose the maximum speed and start climbing. This system allows you to select a speed from 1.5 to 8 kilometers an hour. Despite the difficult terrain, the Land Cruiser 300 drives confidently to the top. Now, let's check how the crawl control works when descending. When we stopped on a slope and put it in reverse on the Land Cruiser 200, the car rolled down a bit before driving uphill. In the case of the Land Cruiser 300, the car immediately drove in the right direction without kickbacks. And the most interesting thing is how quiet it has become in the cabin when the crawl control is engaging. No more annoying brake noises. The recipe is very simple. Switch to neutral, activate the low range, transfer the gearbox selector to drive, turn on the crawl control, and that's it. The LC300 turns into an off-road monster. Also, there will be a GSR version available with more off-road suitable bumpers and front locking differential. This is going to be very interesting. Another innovation of the Land Cruiser 300 is the dynamic descent from the mountain. If the crawl control only works up to 8 kilometers an hour, then the DAC allows you to safely descend at speeds up to 30 kilometers an hour. The intensity can be selected by rotating this knob, and the speed is displayed on the instrument panel. But before we proceed, I want to show you the transparent trunk function. To be honest though, I still don't understand when it may become useful. If you have any ideas, please write them in the comments. To return to the camp, I used the Sport S Plus mode. There is a powerful pickup at 4,000 RPMs, and I am pressed into the back of the seat by acceleration. You couldn't even dream of this in the previous Land Cruiser. Perhaps some of you will say that these were the simplest obstacles. Let me remind you that this is an official event from Toyota Motor Kazakhstan. And in the next video, we will test the capabilities of this car on my favorite obstacles. So, having driven these two SUVs, albeit in not the most difficult, but similar conditions, it's about time to summarize. I'll start from the driving position. Due to the wide central console extending to the doors, the driver has a racing car cockpit feeling. 
big guys may feel a little cramped here, the LC200 was definitely more spacious. The wide display of the multimedia system with surround view, high-res cameras allows you to fully control the situation around the car, which is especially important when overcoming difficult obstacles. Another nice innovation, finally there is a place for your smartphone. There's wireless charging too. Previously, you had to put your phone in one of the cup holders. Rear passengers got big screens, a dual zone climate control, and the seats beside heating now have ventilation. But nothing has changed in the legroom. Just like in the LC200, in the new Land Cruiser, the seating position will be cramped behind a tall driver. Provide that your height is 175 centimeters and above. Well, now to the fun part, the engine and the brakes. The turbocharged gasoline V6 produces 650 newton meters of torque. This allows accelerating the heavy frame based SUV from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 6.8 seconds. The acceleration is felt especially well after 4,000 RPMs. Previously, this was definitely not the case with the naturally aspirated V8, where the acceleration was smooth without bright accents. By the way, the LC200 with gasoline 4.6 V8 makes 0 to 100 kilometers in 9.2 seconds. The difference is enormous. The new engine of the new Land Cruiser is coupled with a 10-speed automatic transmission. This should affect fuel consumption. It was not possible to measure the fuel economy during this particular test, but I managed to do the 140 challenge. So, the LC300's engine revs at 1700 RPM, cruising speed at of 140 kilometers an hour, while the LC200's engine with six-speed automatic transmission needs to keep 2200 RPMs to maintain the same speed. I'm curious about the difference in fuel consumption when measured by the classical method of filling the fuel tank to the top and checking the similarly filled gasoline volume after 100 kilometers. I will definitely do this as soon as possible. But for now, write in the comments what you think about the combined fuel economy of the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 with a turbocharged gasoline V6. The next important aspect is brakes. The size of the brake discs and calipers has not changed, but the settling of the brake system is different now. Therefore, if earlier when the brake pedal was pressed, the deceleration was not linear, and at the very beginning of the pedal stroke, there was a certain zero effect idle zone. Now the deceleration efficiency is directly proportional to pressing the brake pedal and the driver can stop the car with pinpoint accuracy. Engine power and effective brakes were exactly the things that the LC200 with the 4.6 liter gasoline V8 was so lacking. Now about the off-road assistance. We will also check the difference in the behavior of the car in different modes on my obstacles. And now I want to note the more efficient and acoustically comfortable operation of the traction control system. If earlier the TCS rattled all over the cabin, horrifying the unprepared drivers. Now, it is not hard at all, and this certainly pleases. Plus, the dynamic descent mode is available now. It's a very welcome tool on a long, slippery, or steep slope. And as a cherry on top, I want to note the presence of the limited slip differential on the rear axle of the Land Cruiser 300, although not all configurations will receive it. Plus, an off-road worthy GR Sport version will appear a little later with steep bumpers and a stock front locker. This is a claim for absolute leadership, since none of the classmates can offer such an impressive off-road arsenal. But at the moment, there is no information when the GR Sport will go on sale. We will know about this a little later. In the meantime, I can state one thing, the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 is a new stage in the evolution of the legendary model. It has become more powerful, faster, and offers a wide range of options. That's all from me, please let me know your opinion about this car. I'm Dis, see you in the next video.